You're not very good at the selfie thing, Phoenix. No. Not very good at it. No. 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 <laughs> to go swim in Moose Lake. It's pretty hot out, so I think I have some fun with Grandma. So while they're gone, I have to take care of their baby calves. We've got six baby calves right now that are on milk, and then I think we've got one that's still in the hut, but she is weaned. There's the bucket I was looking for. This is what I usually use for pouring into the bottles, because it's got a spout. Okay. The kids call him Chipmunk for some reason. Oh. Hey Lacey, you gotta get your ear tag in. Hey Nala. Oh, last but not least. This is Tango's little heifer calf. I haven't named her yet. I gotta come up with something good. But she needs a little physical therapy. You see here, she's got the hyperextended tendons. They're not super bad. She's got it in the back a little bit too, but not as bad as the front. Um, so just kind of get up, help her up, have her stand for as long as she can to help get those back into a normal position. You can kind of see from the side. But she's got a sweet temperament. Hi, Phoenix. You need your ear tag too. That's my pretty girl. That's my pretty girl. When she was born, she had those overextended tendons in the front leg. 
They're looking better. She's able to walk way better. So she's a little spoiled, just a little. Sorry, Jolly. No more milk for you. So we got asked the other day, what do we do with our baby calves? Do we keep them? Do we raise them up for beef? Do we sell them as baby calves? Do we take them to the, to the sale barn? Or do we sell them private sale only? So I thought I'd take this chance to kind of talk about what we do with our calves. So right now we have two bull calves. This is Flash, and he's half Angus. He's from my brown Swiss Holstein cross heifer Jolene. And then this is our other bull calf we have right now. And like I said, for some reason the kids call him Chipmunk. I have no idea why. So those are the two bull calves that we have right now. And they both have different places they're gonna go. So Flash here, it's actually been sold to Alan's dad. He wanted this calf basically from the moment it was conceived, whether it was a heifer or a bull calf. So that's where he'll be going. He's already been castrated, and then he'll be raised up for beef. And then Alan's dad will either raise him up for themselves for beef, or he'll sell that, uh, sell it that animal. Now Chipmunk here, and now it's a ridiculous name. Now he's also been sold. So he'll be going to a family that wants to raise up their own beef. This will be their first time raising up their own beef. So it'll be a good experience for them to get to learn. So I do have a couple things I do with my bull calves before I sell them to a private party because we do not take our bull calves to auction pretty much ever. Mainly because Jersey bull calves are not as valuable as Holstein bull calves. But this guy here, He's already been castrated too. We cut them, we do not band them. And we cut them, if you cut them really, really early, like the day they're born, that makes it super simple because they can't pull their testicles up or anything like that. But these guys got done here a week and a half, two weeks ago. So a little later than we'd like. But one rule that I have when I sell bull calves, I do not sell newborn bull calves, ever. This guy here was born June 4th. I think I've got a little video shot of him. I'll stick in here. It's a boy. But yeah, so now it's already June 25th. So he's already over 21 days old. So that's where I like to sell them is when they're between two and three weeks old. Mainly because if you're selling them to a buyer who's maybe somewhat inexperienced with calves, they're kind of already over the worst chance of, you know, like a, Salmonella scours or E. coli scours. They just have a much better start under their belt already when I sell them at two or three weeks old. And that's worked out really, really well for people. Now Flash here, he'll stay here till he gets weaned. But as far as our baby bull calves go, they get the same care and treatment as our heifer calves do. Right in the back there, he's got grain and water, full-time access to that. They get their bottles twice a day. But yeah, they're just not something that we keep around, except for this guy. He's our Jersey Angus Cross steer. We'll be raising him up for beef. I didn't want to say it too loud. I didn't want him to get worried. But yeah, so we'll usually keep at least one or two bull calves if they're Angus Cross for us for beef. And it seems like lately we always end up with one or two that are beef cross. And now, we've actually started breeding some of our poorer cows beef, so it'll be a little bit easier. They won't be quite so few and far between. Because this year we actually had to buy a beef heifer to butcher out because he wasn't ready to go yet. Now, not all of our bull calves necessarily go for beef. We have a few people that'll buy a dairy bull calf for a 4-H project. Or, we have people that'll buy a bull calf from us for a herd bull. Being as we use AI breeding, we do end up with some pretty good bloodlines and we have a lot of people around the area that still use bulls pretty much full time for their breeding program. So they get a bull calf from us and he'll be their future herd bull. So not every animal is necessarily destined to be hamburger or steak or pot roast, round steak, brisket, ribs. Those are all very good. I think you guys are done. Hey, 
Lady Joe, you knocked your bottle out. Now our heifer calves, obviously we keep them, but not necessarily all of them. We'll sell some of them to people that are looking for a 4-H project too. You need grain. But for the most part, I'd say we keep about 99% of our heifer calves. Now our heifer calves, they'll either be in a hut like one of these, like that, or they'll be in the pen in a barn. Because we have those new calf tail pens that we were using too. Now I think there's pluses and minuses to using the huts and inside pens. I don't really like using the huts in the winter because it seems I haven't had really good luck with them. I've had a few that end up losing the, they get a little bit of frostbite on the tips of their ears and I don't like that. So then we use the pens in the barn more in the winter. But basically once they're in here, they'll stay in here in a hut until they're weaned and then usually a week or two after, especially with jerseys because if you put them in a group right away, this is what they want to start doing. They want to start sucking on their pen mates. So I like to keep them by themselves for at least a few days to a week after they've been weaned off so they don't start sucking on their pen mates when they get moved up to the next pen. So once the calves have been weaned off and they seem to be doing pretty good on their feet and everything, then they get moved up to the next group. With having all the different breeds, we don't really group our calves so much by age as we do by size. Jolly's graduated from the hut. She's going to the group pen. Okay, this is Polly's heifer, Jolly. I see Duke. Mocha. So this is our group of weaned heifer calves. Like I said, age ranges are quite different. We have basically a month age difference between Sunday there and Prize. But we try to keep them pretty well close in size, but it's a challenge with the different breeds. But they'll stay in here in this little building until the group gets big enough that we have to move them. So this is our next group of heifer calves right here. And I think they're running, I think from like August to December. And then some of these are beef cross too. But yeah, so they're in this building, which was used to be the pig barn on the farm, but we kind of retrofitted it for heifers after Alan's grandpa quit raising beef in here. And of course they all got Super dirty. Way to be, guys. Didn't you know you're gonna be on camera today? So anyway, they'll stay in this pen for the next few months then, kind of once we get a big group in here. I like to keep about eight or nine. So then by the time that this group here is ready to go out to the pasture, then that group that's in the porta hut and any ones that come into that group too are ready to come in here. So they do have a little bit of an area here where they can get to some grass, if grass grew, but you kind of need rain for that. But they have a small little pen there that they can get into. But yeah, so they'll be in here then until they are ready to go out and be bred. But yeah, so this is the pen that they're in until they get to be about a year old or until I'm ready to have them get bred. Once they're ready to be bred, then they get to go out into our dry cow and heifer pasture. Out there. You can see Jetta and Isabel are over there. And then there's, there should be another dry cow out here somewhere. I'm not sure where she is. But the rest of them are heifers. And then that guy there is actually an Angus bull. We sold our Jersey bull because he was starting to get aggressive at the fence even when the kids went by and that's not good. 
So right now we've got an Angus bull out there to clean up these heifers that our Jersey bull missed. And he did miss a couple. But the Angus bull just seems to be much more even-tempered. Let's just go with that. But yeah, so then these heifers will be in here uh, until they get ready to calve. And then they'll go in the barn and then they'll join the milking herd. So that's kind of the life of our heifer calves. And a lot of these heifer calves then, they'll be milking in the barn with their moms. Here we go, mother and daughter, June and her daughter, Mystery. So even though they get separated for a while, all the moms and daughters pretty much get reunited when they start milking. Ella's daughter, or this is Ella, and Ella's daughter Ditto is milking too. This is Dory's heifer Silk. And we have Bailey here. And Bailey's daughter Sadie. Yeah, over there, that's Jewel. And here's her daughter, Jem. And this is Dory. And like I said, we have her heifer Silk milking. And like I said, even if they're not all mother daughters, we have a lot of sisters and half sisters and aunts, it's a family affair. So, that's what happens to our calves. And we try to keep our cows around as long as possible. My girl April here, she's 10 years old and still going strong. Yeah. Get Phoenix some grain. Yeah, you need some grain. I try to keep this organized, but man, those pipes are just like a magnet to Joshua to play with. Cat feed. Hey, pretty girl. No. Here we go. This is a good exercise for you. Yes. Her feet look so much better. They were pretty, like, curved over. I've been spending a lot of time with her. Getting her out there and exercising them. Yes. You look much better. Much better. I told Alan we could just leave her loose and have her be like a yard cow, but he didn't seem quite so excited about that idea as I did. Oh, chip. Hi. <laughs> Who's that guy? What's he doing? Good job, Phoenix. Good night, Phoenix. Almost forgot.
Now you're set. Good night. Here's the boys' new kittens, Duke and Jumper. Got them from a friend. You guys are so cute. Yeah. Oh no! Your owners aren't even here. They're off swimming. I'll give you guys some attention. Yeah, I'll give you guys some attention. Bye.